الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أمر المسلمين أن يعمروا مساجده بالعبادة والتعة ونهاهم أن يحدثوا فيها ما ينفر الملائكة من اللهو والإضاءة وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدًا عبده ورسوله بشر من اعتاد المساجد بالأمن والإيمان اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وآل آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما يعمر مساجد الله من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة ولم يخش إلا الله فعسى أولئك أن يكونوا من المهتدين صدق الله العظيم Respected sisters and brothers in Islam Let me ask this question first How do you feel being in a mosque? How do you, how comfortable you are, how peaceful you are, how tranquil you are being, staying in the house of Allah. The ayah which I have just recited is from Surah Al-Tawbah. As a matter of fact, this surah gives us a, and some important information about the masjids. The mosques of Allah shall be built and maintained and visited frequently by those who have faith in Allah and also the Day of Judgment and those who perform their regular prayers and also give their legal alms obligatory duty of paying the poor and the destitute the zakat and also those who are humble and fear none but Allah Almighty. It is these people, as the ayah indicates, who will be rightly guided or who are hoped to be staying on the right path. These verse clearly sets out the guidelines or certain guidelines for maintaining and building and improving the mosques. First, mosque is the house of Allah. Second, who can maintain the mosque? His heart is attached to the mosque. The, those who believe in Allah and, of course, and uh, believe in the hereafter. Believe in Allah meaning responsibility. Believe in the hereafter accountability. And also perform regular prayers, of course, in the mosque. And he is also careful in fulfilling his duty of zakat. And he fears none but Allah. And these are the conditions that are to be met by anyone who is willing to really be responsible, a trustee in the house of Allah Almighty. And it doesn't mean that the others cannot, but they are, I think the Quran indicates that they should make an effort to be a, such a person who is meeting all these conditions. Dear sisters and brothers in Islam, masjids are the houses of Allah on the earth. Allah Almighty prepared and assigned these places for His servants, us, to show our humility, submission, and also love and muhabba and affection to one another. And He has made the house of worship as a center for us to plea Him, to beseech Him, to ask Him, to approach Him, and please Him. He has made these places of worship a source of his mercy and rahmah, a place for his angels to descend. And we don't know how many angels are observing us right now. And a, a garden of his lovers, and not a, just a meeting place, but also a place of mahabbah, a place of ibadah, a place of rahmah, as some scholars indicate, makanun uhuwa wal wahda a place of brotherhood, sisterhood, and unity and solidarity. Then, يجب علينا أن نحترمها ونعرف حقوقها ونؤدي واجباتها. In this case, 
it is necessary for us to show our respect these places and to learn and know Adab al-Masjid in the first place and so to teach our children, our youth Adab al-Masjid. Not only inside the masjid, outside the masjid, also the environments, vicinity around are regarded as part of the masjid. Therefore, they should be also well maintained and cleaned and proper etiquettes should be observed also outside as we do inside. We should follow the rules and etiquettes before entering, during entry and during inside while performing the prayer. And there are really and what we call Adab al-Masjid as outlined by scholars in the past. Inshallah, in one of these khutbahs, I will devote that to these areas. But I would like to draw your attention at this moment to the significance of the subject by this khutbah. It is incumbent upon us as Muslims to maintain the mosques, to improve the conditions. When you see something wrong in the mosque, you should immediately report to the person who is in charge if something goes wrong in the masjid. Or you see something really blocking, something dirty, don't wait for others. Immediately take action and try to do your best, inshallah, to make this place clean and pure. This place is, as we said, center of peace, sakina, as Quran says, meaning tranquility and serenity. To achieve all this, we have to work in the spirit of cooperation as we are, as if we are competing in a race with one another to keep the place perfect and impeccable. As a person or a woman and men, boys and girls, youngs or youths or elderly, whoever enters a mosque should feel, feel not only the most happy, the most peaceful person, but also deeply attached to the house of Allah that he or she will never want to leave the mosque. So this is what is, uh, is important. This can only happen and can be achieved when we each of us assume our individual responsibility with the principles of respect and love one another. Mosques are the Jannatul or Jannatul Ard. is a small paradise on the earth of Allah. And when you therefore take for a while and when you are here, you are connected to the metaphysical world, to the spiritual world after all. Let me quote a couple of hadiths uh, from Rasulullah And one is regular hadith as uttered by the Prophet. The second one is hadith al-Qudsi. The words come from Rasulullah, the meaning comes from Allah Azza wa Jal. The first, Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man tawadda'a fi baytihi فَأَحْسَنَ الْوُضُوءِ ثُمَّ أَتَى الْمَسْجِدَ فَهُوَ زَائِرُهُ فَهُوَ زَائِرُ اللَّهِ وَحَقٌ عَلَى الْمَزُورِ أَنْ يُكْرِمَ الزَّائِرَ How beautiful the hadith. One who takes his ablution, but how? In the best beautiful manner, by observing all the conditions, not rushing, taking his wudu as if he is feeling the wudu himself or herself. Then coming to mosque, he is qualified to be a guest of Allah. He deserves to be called a guest of Allah, as the hadith says. And who is the host then? Allah Almighty is the host. And he, we are the guest, he is the host. Therefore, hadith says, it is the duty of, of the host, Allah Azza wa Jal, to treat, treat his guest with all generosity. Whatever you want, he will give you as his blessings. Again, in the second hadith, hadith al-Qudsi, قال الله تعالى إن بيوتي في أرض المساجد وإن زواري فيها أمارها فتوبى لمن تطهر في بيته ثم زارني في بيتي فحق على المزور أن يكرم زائره On my earth, hadith says, there are houses which belong exclusively to me, Allah says, which belong to me exclusively. And those who visit there frequently are my personal guests for they maintain the, these mosques, these places by their frequent visits and worship. How blessed this person is who cleanses himself in his or her home and then comes to visit me in my house. It is therefore, Allah says, it is my obligation to treat this guest with generosity and honor. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes upon himself as the, as the host to show his favors and blessings upon his visitors. And I would like to just make a comparison. When you go to visit a friend of yours, a house, what do you do? You dress properly and take your car or a gift and with this nice perfume and you are, in, you, you are, in, you are sure that you will not really a kind of uh, discourage your guest by your presence. On the contrary, he will welcome you with whole heart. Imagine, and you are coming to the same place, house of Allah. After all, host is Allah Almighty. If this is the case, you also show then your utmost respect to the house of Allah. Exactly in the same way when you come to the house of your friends, you should also the same, even more respectful than ever before when you come to the mosque. The end you enter, do you, do you step, for example, on the carpets with, I am sorry to use the expression because we are brothers and sisters here, with your stinking socks, with your dirty shoes or dirty socks? No, no, not at all. Allah Almighty is your host who welcomes you. And he says, because of your visit to my place, it is my duty to show my generosity to you and as a host. That's to say, Allah Almighty, takes upon himself to entertain us in this place. Now, I ask the same question which I posed in the beginning of my khutbah. How do you feel about being as a guest in the house of Allah? If you feel that you deserve to be called a, like a zair as a guest of Allah, Alhamdulillah, you have achieved this. But if you have not achieved this, do not worry, make efforts to be a guest of Allah. And we have to make even our places uh, of worship, you know, an attractable place for our youth, for our children. And but also we have to teach them how to behave in the house of Allah. As you teach them when you go to visit your friends in their house, hey, don't make noise, don't misbehave, something like that. So it, this is exactly what we would like to do. Now, let me quote another hadith. قال عليه الصلاة والسلام إذا رأيتم الرجل يعتاد المسجد فاشهدوا له بالإيمان. If you see someone regularly attending the prayers, coming to mosque, you should testify that he or she is a Muslim. Par excellence. Your testimony is there. If you see, when you see someone regularly attending the prayers, coming to mosque and visiting frequently, that is the very self-evident of his being or her being a Muslim and a believer par excellence. So you should judge him as a believer. Brothers and sisters, mosques of Allah are open for everybody and supposed to remain open for all the times. But because of the circumstances as we had faced, still we are facing, there might be some restrictions taken as a measures by the authorities and we should respect that. We cannot exclude anyone from the house of Allah. Everyone has the full freedom and freedom in, in a sense also everyone is equal here to enter the place provided that they are clean, pure and respectful for the house of Allah Almighty. And two things are important here. One is cleanliness, the other is khushu. Khushu and tahara and khushu meaning utmost respect and humility in the, in the house of Allah. And therefore, no quarrel, no screaming, no shouting, etc. If a person misbehaves in a mosque or blocks someone from entering the mosque or prevents the person from entering the mosque, then I'm afraid we will be subjected to the meaning of this ayah as Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمَنْ أَصْدَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ فِيهَا إِسْمُهُ وَسْعَى فِي خَرَابِهَا أُولَٰئِكَ مَا كَانَ لَهُمْ أَنْ يَدْخُلُوهَا إِلَّا خَائِفِينَ لَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِزْيٌ وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ When, in a sense, this is a question Allah asks, who does a greater evil or injustice or, injustice or greater wrong? Then the person who prevents the name of Allah from being mentioned in his places. And also uh, strives or strives to destroy the masjid. Ill motives, ill intention. Such people, Allah says, never enter these places. 
They have no right to enter these places if they have the ill motives intention. These places, and except they should enter in fear, or they enter in fear because they are not attached to mosque. And for these people, Allah says, there is a disgrace, humiliation in this world, as well as a grave punishment in the hereafter. Women Azlamu, therefore, Mimman Mana Allah, it is very important. We have no right to prevent anybody from entering the house of Allah as long as he is sincere, respectful, careful, and taking care of the masjid. And I can ask this question, who can cause violence and division in the mosque? Who can quarrel or dispute in the mosque? Who can raise his or her voice in the mosque? Two people, either ignorant or disrespectful or disbeliever. Ignorant, tolerable, you can teach him and improve him and discipline him. But if he is deliberate on purpose, that means he's a ill intention, we have to protect the masjid from such peoples. This ayah therefore warns us that we should be very careful, respectful for the house of Allah Almighty. In the end of my khutbah, my brothers and sisters, without taking much of your time, I would like to remind myself and yourself, and we are approaching, alhamdulillah, very closely, day by day, the beautiful season of Eid al-Adha, sacrifice, the biha. It is the, you know, the greatest and the second Eid for all Muslims to celebrate. Let us keep in mind that there are millions of Muslims across the globe who are in dire need, not only me, dire need of your help. Therefore, it will be better for you to donate a qurbani, a sacrificial animal, as a gratitude to Allah, Allah Almighty, and send, send them so that they will join your celebration, they will take part in your gratitude as when as you slaughter your, your own sacrifice. And because they have no means, by the way, to have access even the food, let alone the meat, by donating a kurbani or a sacrificial animal to your brothers and sisters, you will give them the opportunity to share your love, affection, care, and generosity. They will be able to eat the meat of your sacrifice, and they will be also very grateful to you. And they will make special prayer also for, for you. After all, as I said, they need more than us. You have, alhamdulillah, living in this part of the world, all the means, all the opportunities. We should be ever grateful for that to Allah Almighty. Therefore, our Diyanet Foundation, our center, mashallah, has been very successful in organizing such, you know, donations. We have a, a well-established institution, and uh, inshallah, our uh, brothers, will put a stand outside. Those who would like to donate a qurbani, please do so. And not, but the, not the least, not last, last but not the least, do not ever forget, this is your place, this is house of Allah, and all those places depend on your generous support. And I, as a believer, as a Muslim, as your, your, your part of brother, part of your heart, to be honest with you, I feel sometimes embarrassed to even remind you these things. I feel embarrassed, you know, to repeat these things. But we have no choice to ask from you your generous support. May Allah Almighty accept your donations, accept your uh, qurbani and sacrifice. May Allah Almighty keep you and all of us, all the ummah, all the humanity in the best of health. ألا إن أحسن الكلام وأبلغ النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا قرأ القرآن فاستموا لهم أن سلا لكم ترحمون الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله من كامل والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يولدنا من صل عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم طهر قلوبنا واستر أيوبنا واشف مرضانا وقت ديوننا وبيض وجوهنا وارفع درجاتنا وارحم آباءنا واغفر أمهاتنا وأصلح ديننا ودنيانا اللهم احضر من خذل المسلمين اللهم احفظ أهل الأهل الإسلام وأنبالنا وبلادنا اللهم احفظ جميع الإسلام من جميع الآفات والأمراض والبلايا 
Allahumma ansurul muslimin fi kullil mekan. Amin. Allahumma istecib duana ve ektubü selamete ve sıhhate aleyna ve ala ali cemiyel muslimin. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Aqimus salat. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. İnna Allaha ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa itaa'i zil qurba wa yanha wa yanha 'anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghy ya'idhukum la'allakum tazakkarun. Aqimus salat.